Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in our previous video we discovered that our single family energy model has actually had a generic office program assigned to it from the beginning, which means that it has a bunch of schedules and loads that are in line with that office usage. So in this video we're going to try and change that program over to something that's more reflective of a residential single family home and hopefully in that process get a better set of assumptions for our energy model in terms of those schedules and loads. So first things first, I'm going to make Grasshopper large here. You may remember in the previous video I said that this assumption of a generic office was actually determined all the way back here when we created these rooms from solids. And there were a bunch of other inputs to the component here that we had not gone over when we first created the, this, this room from its geometry of a solid closed BREC. So looking closer now at the options that we have here when we created these rooms, you'll notice that one of these is actually a program which we could have used to specify these schedules and loads on, of this room. Uh, and you can see that it even tells us if we hover over it that it, the default one is this generic office. So we can see right off the bat if we're able to change this program input, we should be able to change that generic office program and all the assumptions that are associated with it. So in order to do this, I'm going to go over to the HB Energy tab, which looks like a honeybee with a little flame, or, or you might see it just labeled HB Energy. And you'll see under this Basic Properties tab, there actually is a whole subsection just devoted to what is essentially a library of programs that we ship with Honeybee. And in particular, this HB Search Programs component is what I'm going to drag and drop on the canvas right now. And maybe I'm going to keep it just to the left side of all of the, the rest of my grasshopper definition here. But you'll see this component will output all of the programs that we ship with Honeybee by default. And if I connect the room program up to a panel, you can see, yeah, there's a lot to see here. So it looks like with Honeybee right now, we ship a grand total of almost 1,800 programs for all these different possible usages. And you, so you can see, like, it, it can get very, very specific in the way that we specify programs. Generic Office is probably the most generic that it gets. And we could really delve down into these individual types of programs, like a corridor in a courthouse even. Uh, very, very specific types of programs that we get here. But to help us narrow down our search, we can use some of these other inputs to the component. So I'm actually going to grab this other drop-down component called HB Building Programs which includes a little drop down of the building types into which these individual room programs are classified. And you can see all together the programs that we ship with Honeybee, they fall under a category of some, it's probably somewhere between 15 and 20 building types. Uh, and a lot of these should be pretty recognizable. We have offices here, we have apartment buildings, we have retail, strip mall, a hospital. Uh, so all, we have all these programs essentially that come together with Honeybee. And I should say all these programs are, we didn't come up with them ourselves. They come from the Open Studio Standards gem, which itself takes all of these schedules and loads from a set of uh, example models called the Department of Energy Commercial Reference Buildings. And those are taken from studying actual real buildings and trying to match the energy use of these various different types of, of buildings. So I know a lot of references going back there, but the important thing to remember is that is that all these programs come from trying to match the real energy use of these actual building types. So if I select, let's say, mid-rise apartment, that's probably the most residential of all the building types that we have here that's available. If I go and select that and plug that in for my building program, you'll see it'll narrow down from that list of 1,800 programs just the ones that are most relevant to the, to the mid-rise apartment building type. You'll see it would do the same thing if I selected large office. We had a few more different types of, of rooms within a large office. Or let's say uh, uh, a retail space. There are a few different types of retail spaces. Or uh, let's see, a hospital. You have a lot of different types of programs within a hospital. But one thing you'll also notice is that all of these programs, once we connect up a building program, all of them are from the most recent version of the building code. That is what this 2019 refers to. It actually refers to ASHRAE 90.1 2019, which is coordinated with, with the International Energy Conservation Code. So that's how you, there are older, what we call vintages of buildings. If you wanted to try and model a building in an older point in time or with an older set of assumptions, 
But chances are, if you're trying to model a building today, these 2019 templates are, are going to be pretty close to how what you'd actually find in real buildings. So let me go back to selecting out our mid-rise apartment. And you'll see within our mid-rise apartment, there are three different room programs. So there is a program for the apartment itself, the actual living space that people are in. And then we have one for the corridor that might connect all those apartments and then one for an office, which makes sense you might have in a mid-rise apartment. But given that this is just a single family home, I don't think we really have, you know, we don't have any corridors connecting living spaces to one another, nor do we have a sort of central office. So I think I can just take this first program here and I'll use that as, my, as the actual program that I want to assign to my room. So the easy way I can do this is to grab a native grasshopper list item component, list item, and I just double click and type list item to get this component. And I can go and just connect up the list of three different programs here. And you'll see, actually, it should just take the first one by default, which is the one that I want. Although I could have just as easily connected a slider, let's say, from 0 to 10, that uh, would allow me to select out some of the different programs that we have here. If I wanted to, let's say, grab the corridor or the, or the office or something like that. Uh, but I'm good with just the apartment here. I could actually just take this right here and plug it directly into my room component but all that i really need actually is this text description here so if i right click on this on this panel and i say copy data only that'll copy that name of that program that midrise apartment to my clipboard so that now i can just go and paste that into a panel by double clicking on the canvas typing double quote and doing control v to paste that text into the panel so once i hit enter I'll now have this, and this is just a little bit of a neater, nicer, cleaner way to do it, because now I can just assign this apartment to this room without needing all these components that help me search through the canvas. I mean, I'll still leave this here, maybe off to the, the corner, we'll say, but, uh, but really once I've used these to actually search for the program that I want, I don't really need them anymore, because this text is the key thing that I need here. So I'm going to look at Rhino again here just so that we can see. So as soon as I connect this up, in theory, this should update the rooms and update the whole model that we built here. So we should actually see a different program type uh, displaying on the color room attributes component here. So if I go and connect up this, this mid-rise apartment apartment to the program input here, we should see, boom, now we are, are no longer a generic office here. We now have a mid-rise apartment. And we can start to understand some of the assumptions that were different for this program compared to the office. So for example, the people per area, I think if you had to remember it was something like 0 0.6, and you see in a residence, it, it's about half that, which would make sense. Usually you have a lot more space for, for each person in a residence than you would in uh, an office where you may be packed tightly into a cubicle. So, so we can already understand why this was probably going to make a big difference for our energy model. Oh, and the, the lighting watts per area is also very different. If you remember for the office, it was around, I think, almost 11, 10 or 11 watts per square meter here. It's only six and a half. Uh, electric equipment is also much lower. You don't have all those computers that you'd have in an office, right? Maybe you just have a few home appliances. Uh, and importantly, also, we can see hot water usage in liters per hour per, per square meter floor area. And uh, right, this was something that we didn't have when we were using a generic office. And that makes sense because in a, in a residence you have showers and you have a kitchen, right? There's going to be hot water usage that you wouldn't necessarily have in an, in an open office floor plan. Uh, what else? Let's see. Infiltration seems more or less the same as the, as the office. We've got ventilation is certainly different. It's mostly zero, it seems like, except for, yeah, some air changes per hour uh, that, that's being used here. And what else? And we can see also those schedules are all coordinated with that uh, apartment mid-rise, whether that's the lighting schedule or the occupancy schedule or the equipment schedule. All those are being set based on that. And we can see, yeah, this, the set points I don't think are all that different from what we saw in the office. Uh, but maybe maybe the setbacks are slightly different. In any event, we can go through this and really understand now how much our assumptions are changed by using a residential program like this mid-rise apartment as opposed to simply taking that default generic office. So, all right, so now we, we're pretty sure that we have the usage of the space defined correctly for an energy model. 
But there is still one set of things that we should check before we go and send this off to an energy simulation. And that is one of these attributes I didn't quite check yet, which is this construction set. And you'll see that the constructions of our room are being assigned using what's, what's called essentially a construction set, much in the same way that our program dictates what that, those loads and schedules are going to be. This construction set is what's dictating what the walls and roofs and floors and windows are made out of in our energy model. And so in the next video, we're going to delve into what this construction set actually means and what the assumptions are and make sure that this is a decent assumption for our energy model. And if not, we're going to change it. So thank you for joining for this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.